Hey everyone, welcome back to Shutter Magazine. I'm Dustin Lucas and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to beautify your bride in Lightroom. So let's jump on in and start with our tutorial. So what I'm looking to do is to do some basic level touch-up work, but also some healing and cloning and some things that you might be familiar with in Lightroom, but how to take those things further. Um, you know, Lightroom takes, uh, you know, it's speedy, um, but matching that efficiency with results are so important when doing touch-up work. So um, for a lot of you out there, including myself, um, you know, I like to use Photoshop. Uh, I like to do frequency separation. I like to do layers. I like to do all these things in Photoshop. Um, but in trying to use a tool like Lightroom um, that I have at my arsenal, I want to make sure how can I push the limits of Lightroom and get something pretty close to the same results um, and just using this tool, right? So what I'm going to do is walk you through how to go from an image like this, um, which is a nice portrait, but it needs a little bit of cleaning up a little bit for the bride and taking it to here, right? So there's going to be a lot of subjectivity in this, right? Removing blemishes, you know, I think we can all agree that nobody wants a big pimple on their face, but we want to keep beauty marks and birthmarks. Those things are important. Um, we might not necessarily want to um, sculpt or, sh um, you know, liquefy the, ba the body. Um, you know, some people have strong rules about that. So you definitely don't want to do any of those things without your bride's permission or something just to enhance their beauty, but not necessarily contort them so they can't even recognize themselves. Those things are really important here. So as we're going through Lightroom, we want to keep in mind the order of operations, right? Because when you're editing, you want to do things in a certain order to enhance performance. That's why we're using Lightroom, but also make sure that we're doing all the necessary steps as we go along so we don't have to go back over our steps and have to re-edit and things like that. So we're going to start with the heal and clone tool to remove those blemishes and things like that. The next step you'd want to do after using that tool is you want to do the lens correction and transform. So a lot of this kind of sculpting um, and shaping of the body I'm doing there with the face, making it a little more elongated, um, those kind of things would want to, you'd want to do um, second, just for the performance of Lightroom. And then you'd want to go into the develop module and do some of the um, color and toning work, things like that. Um, and then, you, then you're ready to do the brush work, right? All the dodging and burning, the skin softening, all the local adjustments, that kind of stuff is second to last. Um, and then attention to details. You want to be doing the sharpening adjustments. You'd want to be going in and doing any last minute transform or body sculpting. Those kind of more detail oriented, maybe even doing something more creative, like some creative toning with the tone curve um, tool, which we'll get into. But oh, that's the, um, it's very important to follow that order of operation um, in order to get our image to the next level but also a deliver an image to the bride that they're gonna love, right? We wanna make sure she can recognize herself, um, they're happy with the way they look, but we're enhancing the image, but not necessarily distorting it. So let's jump into the heal, um, the heal and clone tool to start brushing and um, removing some of those blemishes. So now that we're ready to heal the skin, we can jump into Lightroom and start to figure out how we can get set up to do that, right? So it's gonna be very important for us to be working one-to-one -one or at 100% when we're healing. So what you want to do in the develop module is make sure you can toggle between the fit in the screen, which we have here, and the one-to-one, -one, because you want to be able to zoom in on this image. Now keep in mind, you want to make sure you're working with an original photo. You don't want to be working from a smart preview only. You definitely want to have the RAWs connected here. It's very important as we're working one-to-one, -one, you want to have all those pixels present. So what becomes very important for you is in toggling this is learning hotkeys. So the first one we're going to learn is the Z key. So Z or for zoom allows us to zoom in in and out and we can move around our image by holding or clicking in the area, excuse me, now that we have the hand tool. So it becomes very important as we work one to one we can start to find some of these distractions like an eyelash or some of these blemishes on the face that we want to remove. So in doing that now we're ready for the spot removal tool which is the Q key. When we hit that, we have this, uh, I'm going to zoom out here with my Z key. As you can see, we have this brush here that we can increase the size with the bracket keys, um, shrink the size. We can also hold shift with the bracket to change the feathering. Feathering becomes very important when you're cloning. cloning. You want to have a, a heavily feathered brush. But you can also, if you're using um, a brush with a scroll bar on it, you can scroll up and down where you don't have to hit the bracket keys. Or if you're using the touchpad on your laptop, you can do two fingers on the touchpad to increase it. Same goes for holding shift and moving up and down 
And so it's an up and down motion to change, not left and right. It's always up and down to change these brush settings. That becomes very important. We'll get into some of these other settings like opacity a little bit later. Um, we'll keep all of our settings as they are here. Um, we can put the opacity to, we'll leave it at 85 for the moment. Um, actually, we can move it to 100 just to give us a little more, um, little more effects here. So now that we're ready to uh, start removing blemishes, we want to zoom in. And we're basically going to shrink our brush down to the size of an actual blemish. You want the inner circle. Um, let me put the brush over here. You want that inner circle to be pretty small. And you want the blemish itself to be about the size of the inner circle. So as I'm choosing my spot, I'm just going to click. And as you see, it's, it's automatically selecting an area that it's removing that spot. But in order to see that, we have to hit the T key, our toggle tool, and make sure that we're choosing our tool overlay. You can choose the H key to show auto or not. So what you can do is, it's like I said with hotkeys, very important, hit the H key to toggle on and off the tool overlay. So it's going to show you automatically where it's going to go. If you want to move this, all you need to do is move that key there. And if you need to move the source, of course, we're not going to go out there. It does a pretty good job of finding the spot we want to remove. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to shrink my brush down a little bit further because we don't need it to be as large. And the same thing is going to go. We're going to increase the brush size and we're going to go around and we're going to find all these little spots that we want to get rid of. Now, this is a perfect case in point when it didn't choose the best spot, but maybe we want to get something a little bit closer to the skin some of these pores we want to get rid of. Definitely want to get rid of this blemish here. So you're definitely going to take some time and you're going to remove these different blemishes. And as you'll notice, we don't have the ability to just move around the image. We'll have to hold spacebar, click and drag. And we can click and paint if we need to go over a little bit bigger of an area. Very important here to toggle on and off. If you hit the H key, this will let it, this will turn off the this will toggle Make sure to turn on never. And we can toggle on and off with the back, um, back um, space bar, backslash, excuse me, to make sure we're making good decisions as we're removing some of these um, distractions here, right? So as we go back in, we can choose auto, have them turn on. I like to have this turned off so we can kind of see what we're painting right away, where we want to remove things. And it's really that simple. Um, where you want to kind of get a little more tricky um, is where you want to toggle. We're using the clone tool, keep that in mind. Um, to toggle to the heel, we can do Shift T, and that will take us over to the heel tool. So if you want to use something that's going to blend um, you know, different areas of the face, like for instance, if we want to kind of paint out this hair, we can do it and it'll blend in such a way. Um, and do a pretty good job. Same goes for here if we want to remove this hair. So now that we've finished up our cloning and healing, we can toggle that backslash key to make sure all the adjustments we made aren't causing distractions. So we got rid of these crosshairs, which took, which took a little bit longer, but certainly can be accomplished with the clone and um, heal tool. So as you'll toggle on and off, we'll make sure that we're not messing with any of the pixels, but we're also using our Z key to zoom back out to make sure overall we're just getting rid of some of those things. So now that we've done that, we can start to look at, um, we can use a different tool, the Visual Spots tool, which if we click our A key, we can go in and start to find any of those unwanted blemishes that we missed that we also want to make sure, by clicking our Z key, we can now zoom in and make sure, oh, clicked a couple different things here to make sure we're in our spot removal tool, so we're going to hit Q for spot removal, then hit the A key to toggle the visual spots. This tool becomes really helpful whenever you want to remove uh, dust sensor spots. So if you want to zoom out and look for other spots in the image, that can be very helpful to make sure we're removing those. All you simply need to do is click on an area that you want to remove, but then you can click the A key to make sure we didn't remove anything like birthmarks and things like that. So it becomes kind of a, you know, you go back into your visual spots mode, um, you remove some of these 
and as you're clicking and moving of course it turns off but you want to make sure as you're toggling this any of these spots that you want to remove which become a lot more noticeable with these white spots you can make sure that we're not removing any of those so that becomes a very helpful tool when you're not sure if you're done or once you've gotten everything visually taken care of this kind of helps you in a more objective way to remove some of those spots so I really like using this uh, visual spots tool uh, moving into um, the correcting of the color and the tone now you can start to see as our image starts to go from here and just a subtle change of removing some of those details right so it's real subtle but it's attention to details and being able to use the spot removal tool and toggling between the clone and the fuel becomes very important for us um, as we start to move into the next area of the editing now that we're ready to work with the color and toning of the image, we can go into the develop module into the basic panel. So the thing that we want to look at, um, being that we're focusing on the face, is we're going to start to adjust the temperature, the tint, and the exposure. So overall, I'm pretty happy with where the exposure is. Other than there's some hot spots in here, and I want to work with some of these darker shadow spots, we're going to work on that in the next section um, where we can use the heal um, and clone tool to fix the hot spots. And we can use a, the exposure and some other shadow and black point settings to start to tone and add some depth to the lighting on the face of our subject. So when we're talking about correcting the color and tone, the first thing you want to do, and I'm going to reset my image here, is you want to make sure to choose a profile that's appropriate for your liking, right? So to me, I think the Adobe color is a little too saturated. I'm a little too contrasty for me. That's Adobe Standard, which we've um, used in the past. I've purchased a third-party um, profile, which just kind of adds a little more color depth. And you can see that difference between Adobe Color here with the contrast and the Develop. And then also back to Adobe Standard, which just to me seems a little more dead in those skin tones. But the um, there's a plenty of third-party um, options out there for you. Hue Light's one as well. I mean, there's a bunch of them, right? So um, definitely this is something that you want to choose, um, you know, what profile kind of best fits for your camera. Um, you can purchase these. Um, I'm not an advocate for any of them. Um, I'm just going to use the develop two for now just because I like kind of the enhancement that it does here. Um, but there's plenty of them out there for you to try, especially with Visco and different film presets. So use something um, at this point that you like and then start adjusting your basic panel adjustments. It's crucial to change your color profile first then make your adjustments in the basic panel. So overall, I'm pretty happy with um, the tint and everything with the color on the skin, but I can go in now and use target adjustment tools for HSL settings to really start to adjust the luminosity in the skin and correct some of these things that I don't like, right? So holding shift, option, command, and hitting the S key, that automatically initiates, or opens up the target adjustment tool. So I can click on the skin that I want to desaturate and I can drag down. And as you see in the right hand panel, it's starting to lower the orange and yellow tones. Same goes for the background. So if I want to make this a neutral color, I can. I can just click in the background and it automatically neutralizes that. But something to keep in mind is that it's going to neutralize those same tones on the skin and start to make them look a little less lively, um, which isn't a good thing, right, for, for skin tones. So I like to do a subtle adjustment of saturation in those orange to just drop it down a tad bit. I also like to increase the luminance in some of these more orange tones. I'm going to increase the luminance. And now, um, if there's any other areas of the image, like for instance, the lipstick, if I want to brighten the lipstick up or if I want to darken the lipstick, I can do that as well, which will grab those reds. Keep in mind, it's not just the reds in the lipstick, it's the reds in the entire image. But her face typically is orange and yellow, so we're not affecting too much of that. So that's something you want to keep in mind when you start to adjust some of these colors. Is you want to boost those reds, and we want to go into the hue, and we want to make the lips more pink. We really want to intensify that. Um, those are some things that we can adjust. And so it just kind of boosts the lips and helps with those skin tones just a bit. But definitely be careful. Um, if there are reds in the skin tones, adjusting the lips is going to adjust those as well. Um, but as you see here, most of the time with the skin, we're just affecting the orange and some of the yellow tones here. So not too much of an issue. If you want to remove the redness cast in skin, it's all in the hue, right? 
So if you click and drag up, it's going to go towards the greens. We don't want to make our face green, right? Um, but that's going to remove some of that some of that redness. So we can click up and just add a little bit of green tint to help with some of that um, some of the redness in the skin. So I'm overall I'm pretty happy with that. Um, again, we're going to fix the hot spots and things like that in just a moment here. Um, but we don't need to do any further adjustments in the basic panel. I rather like the vignetting that's going on with my lens here. It kind of removes all the drama out of the image and kind of gives me a natural kind of a dodge and um, a burning of the edges and getting me right to the client. So that kind of works out well. Um, and I'm not going to do any transform options just yet. We'll talk about how to body shape with that in the end of the article. Um, but that's about all I need to do for the basic panel. I'm just doing some basic corrective things. Again, color profile, very important to select before you move forward. So now we're ready to move into local adjustments and do some brush work. So now that we're ready to start fixing some of these hot spots, let's open up the heel tool and make sure that we're selected on it, right? So we can click Q to open up the spot removal and we can hold shift in the T key to toggle um, between the uh, heel and the clone brush. So what becomes very important here is we want to start to adjust the opacity of um, some of the areas that we're going to paint in. Let me show you what we're going to do. So I'm going to choose a brush and I'm just going to paint over the cheek here where this big kind of hot spot is. Now as you're going to notice we don't have the option to see what it's selecting so we need to hit our T key and we need to make sure that it's going to show always where it's, oh we don't need all those spots. Let's just do the selected one. And it's grabbing from the face up there. So what we can do now is we can start to adjust the opacity, right? So it actually does a pretty good job of removing that for us altogether, except I want to bring that opacity down to maybe like 66. We can also remove where it's selecting that adjustment from. So if you want to choose an area of the skin where it's a little more like that, or if you want to kind of replicate that here, we can. We can turn the opacity all the way back up. That looks a little off, but we can lower that back down to where it kind of matches the surrounding area. Now if I turn this on never, you can see the difference between just that subtle adjustment. Now we might want to do a little bit bigger of an area, of course, um, if we want to adjust that one. We can hit the delete key to get rid of that one specifically. So we can increase the size of this to make sure, because we have a pretty heavy feathering, we want to make sure that we're adjusting this correctly. Now, if we take it back up to where it's selected up here, that's not a bad area to heal. But as we take it all the way to the right, we want to make sure we're blending it back in. Maybe I want to take it back here. So you're going to you're gonna have to kind of finesse this part of the um, editing because you want to make sure you're not putting, you're not adding a distraction there as we're trying to get rid of this hot spot. This becomes a kind of cool feature to toggle the getting rid of those little hot spots. So we want to make sure as we're zooming into 100%, as you can see, that doesn't make any sense, right? So we want to make sure it's a sharp part of the image. We want to select something that's going to make a little more sense. Obviously, we have a softer part of the image, and we have sharper skin. So again, something to keep in mind. So as we're using a smaller brush, we might need to do this in pieces. We're just grabbing these pores. We want to make sure that we're choosing a sharp area of the image, and likely something that's pretty close to the tones that we have here. And healing is going to do a pretty good job. We can also use clone um, as well. If you just want to clone in that area, but I think healing is going to be a better option for us as we're looking for the right blend. We're going to make this adjustment. Feathering is very important here, of course. Um, but this is something you want to finesse and take some time on, of course, um, in fixing some of these hot spots. It takes a, 
a little bit of practice here with the feathering and things like that. So um, as we're adjusting some of those spots, let's go back to never. Um, we want to kind of come in here and be sort of gentle with some of our hotspot fixing here. Make sure that it doesn't grab the wrong area. And again, we can take, we need to take the opacity down to blend back in what we have. Sometimes 50-50 is a good one um, for this as well. And so I try to do this with a brighter area like this as well to see if we can just kind of paint in I'm going to do kind of a crappy job here, so don't judge me. Um, but if you kind of want to try and paint in some of that color, the difficulty with using the heel tool is that it's not going to paint in color. Clone tool will. And as we increase the opacity, you can fix some of that when you get some of that skin back. But I have a different trick for that. That I like to use um, as well. So it becomes very difficult. Uh, I don't really like to use the clone tool to use for fixing hotspots, uh, but we want to kind of get rid of, you know, this is something we could probably burn down as well, but maybe if we try and just kind of match some of the some of the skin tones, yeah, that's just going to look terrible. Um, and as you do kind of a blending of it, you want to make sure that we're, um, you know, enhancing and fixing some of those spots. So I want to fix something like this little spot in the nose. If we turn that all the way up, it's a, little, it's a sharp part of the image that we don't we don't want to grab a sharp part and put into a, a blurry spot. So this is something that we can kind of grab maybe a little bit further down on the face. Make sure we're grabbing a good spot here. We're kind of trying to finesse this spot here. Um, that can definitely help with like a kind of white spot there. Uh, but again, it takes a little bit of time to do. Um, it's something that we want to make sure as we're checking the before and after, we're not damaging our image or anything like that as well. Um, if we want to change the mask as um, as we're uh, want to go into the adjusting of the skin, we're going to we're going to go into those next steps um, to soften the skin um, and to start to doing that work once we once we get we're happy with some of these hot spots and fixing things like that. So now that we're ready to start softening the skin, we're going to hit the K key to go into our adjustment brush. So what becomes very important here is we want to make sure as we're masking in, we can see exactly what we're doing. So a lot of times I like to go up to the tools panel and choose the tool overlay, uh, adjustment mask overlay, excuse me, and move it to green. Um, if we leave it on red, which it normally is, as we're painting in the effect, and of course with our toolbar on, we can toggle the mask with the O key it becomes very difficult to tell where this mask is, right? It's on the entire image. Well, um, let me put my flow up here. And so as we're painting over her face like this, sometimes the red areas uh, don't become as obvious, especially when we start to adjust the flow. Um, this is something that we can um, start to use to where we're painting on in layers. Um, it becomes very, um, very important as we click on the image. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the mask to a, the adjustment mask overlay to green. So that way we can see that on her face a little more obvious. Um, all these areas as green. So um, just something quick to kind of help out um, so where you can tell where the mask is going to be as we start to paint on all of these areas. I like to be a little more lazy with it. Um, and I like to just paint where all of the skin is that I want to soften and I am just going to do a really lazy job of painting all over the place right so making sure we don't have anything missed on the face 
So now what becomes very important is we have this softening effect and it's all over the eyes, all over the lips. It looks terrible, right? So we're going to go into the range mask option down here and we're going to choose the option color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose just specular highlight on the face and it immediately masks away the eyes and the lips. It does a really good job of doing it automatically. Now you'll notice that there are some areas of the face that we're missing and it's really good to toggle this O key for the mask to make sure you can tell where the mask is going, where it's not going. So this green mask here becomes really important for us. You can choose to hold shift and you can add an area where it's going to increase the mask so now it adds the hair back in which becomes a problem right we don't want the hair to be masked in it's also masking in the eyes so we want to make sure as we're choosing this it might be easier for us to just paint this area in but just for the sake of this tutorial i'm going to go ahead and show you what happens when you apply that there and now we can adjust I'll click off my color picker tool we can adjust to the left and take it to the right where we find the level of the color mask option where we like it. Probably close to 50. And now we can use the option key and we can paint out the hair. That becomes really important when you want to remove that effect from certain areas, specifically like the hair, the eyes, areas like that. So we can go in here and we can still do some manual masking, which I try to do is to reduce as much manual masking as possible just because the goal of using Lightroom is to make things a little bit faster. We can make our brush smaller and make sure we're painting out the eyes. We don't want to soften the eyes. That doesn't make any sense. We'll make sure that we're doing that. We're doing a pretty good job of it. Also, I like to get rid of the eyebrows. I want to make sure we're not masking those out. So I will go in and remove that as well in the effect. Now, something that becomes helpful is when you be, you're be you going to be too meticulous with the mask turned on, right? So I'm going to hit the O key and make sure as I'm painting this out, we're not spending more time than we need to. Um, I just want to paint out the eyebrows real quick just to remove the softening effect. Now we have a heavy amount of skin softening on. If you go to the effects pre-built panel, it has all these options here that we can click on. With the skin smooth, this one has a little more of, um, a little more of a, an appealing um, option here for skin smoothing, but I still think it's a little heavy. So I'm gonna bring the clarity back up to probably negative 50 just so it's a little more natural, the difference between there and there. So it does a pretty good job with the skin softening. Again, we can toggle the mask to make sure our mask is good and all those things. So it does a pretty good job overall of softening the skin. Um, the next thing that we can do to make sure that we're on the right path is we want to start burning um, we want to start burning the shadows and dodging the highlights to kind of add a little more depth to the face. Um, but something you want to keep in mind is you can mess with the highlights and shadows with this tool as well. If you want to kind of do a lazier dodge and burn, I don't think that does a good job. I think it just kind of makes the image look muddy and the skin kind of loses its depth overall. So I'm going to put that sharpening back to zero and add a little bit of sharpening here. Um, noise is fine right about that setting and that's something as I zoom in here it becomes very important right if we're gonna zoom in oh I want to make sure I have my one-to-one -one option here oh, spinning computer here going a little bit slow make sure that we have our panel back so making sure the skin softening effect looks good. So once our image loads, we're toggling in and out like that, and we are toggling on and off, All right? So as we zoom back out, I think that softening effect does a pretty good job, maybe a little bit off on the clarity, 
and we're good to go. So the next thing that we want to start doing is some dodging and burning, and we're going to use our uh, we're going to use the same adjustment brush to start burning down the shadows and dodging these highlights to give a little more depth. So something we talked about earlier is how to replace areas of the face um, or the skin where we lost detail altogether. So there's a quick little trick that I like to do in order to um, fix this, right? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to reset all of these settings here. So I'm going to just go ahead and double click on all the settings being used to make sure everything is gone. So I'm going to drop the exposure down to negative uh, 0.3. And I am going to choose an option here underneath the defringe to choose for a color effect. And I am going to choose something close to the skin tone here to replace this area as well as that. So I'm going to start with a kind of more yellow pink. I think it's going to be a little closer to red. Somewhere in that range, right? So what we can do is we can paint in this area here and just try and mimic that color. Now you have to be careful when you're doing this because it's painting color in this area not necessarily painting in um, a specific skin tone. So something we can do is we can increase or decrease the exposure. Obviously we don't want to go that far but in just darkening some of that area we can try and match some of this, um, some of the skin here. So as you can change the different areas here, we might want to keep this a little more red to kind of fix, blend that a little bit better. Maybe try a different skin tone, something that's a little more subtle. As we drag this to the right, it becomes way more saturated than it needs to be. Just fixing some of that. So this is something very subtle we can do to toggle the missing color there. So as I like to zoom in and drag up to that area of the face, you notice that we're adding some browning to the hair here as well. So that's just holding the option key, increasing our brush, and we can just remove the hair altogether and any other aspects of this adjustment, making sure we get all of these areas the way we want them. And we can toggle that just to help a little bit. It does a pretty good job. Now we can do the same thing down here. We wanna create a new brush do another adjustment. We'd want to move down to this side of the face and we would want to do that same kind of thing. Now I think this looks kind of nice as a highlight there. Um, if you wanted to replace any of these other areas of the skin you can. Um, if you want to just soften some of these areas and add in some negative clarity just to soften underneath the eyes a little bit. I don't think we want to go that far. But we'll add some sharpness as well. And that can help with some of the bags under the eyes as well. I'm going to add some a little more texture back into there. That's a kind of finessing of bringing the clarity back to zero and adding some sharpening to do those kind of things. So that can definitely help um, with adding some color back in to the skin. Um, our next thing that I wanna do is talk about how to do some depth tonal range dodge and burning. So real quick, I'm gonna zoom out here. I'm gonna start with a new brush and I'm gonna start with a very small brush. So we'll make sure that we have some soft spots here and I am going to remove the other ones that I've built. So I'm gonna start with the shadows. So you wanna start large to small. You wanna have a very, a very feathered brush all the way up to 100. And we can take the flow down to 30. Now flow is gonna mean that it's gonna do a very subtle adjustment on our image. So the adjustments that I wanna do 
is I want to take shadows all the way down to negative 100, and I'm going to take blacks down to negative 25. We could just type that in. Again, these are starting points. This is how we're going to start to add in some, some shadow depth to our image. So I'm going to go in and do a very subtle just draw there um, on, on the image, right? So as I paint this in, I'm just going to draw on that shadow. I'm going to go underneath the chin here, and I am going to draw this line here. I want to add a little more depth here in this image. So of course I have my color turned on here. I want to make sure that that is turned off. So let's go ahead and undo our brush here. Let's make sure we have the selected one turned on. I'm going to remove that because it added color. So you got to make sure if you're using this color you want to make sure that it has the X through the square. Even I made the mistake, right? So as we're painting here, I'm just going to do one stroke of the shadows adjustment. All right. Now I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger, almost double the size, and do the same adjustment. All right. So I didn't increase a new brush. I didn't add a new brush. I'm just editing it. And now I'm going to go a little bit larger. Same thing. And it's that movement of just adding in some depth into those areas. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the highlight. So I'm going to click new. Now I have to do a new brush. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing with the highlights. I'm going to take them up to 100. Go the opposite side. I'm going to do plus 25 for the whites. And now I am going to, with my brush, I'm going to add some depth with the highlights. Cheeks here. I am going to look for this line down here. Now, of course, you'll notice that I've used too big of a brush. I'm going to undo that and start over. Let's start with a small brush. Under the eyes. Go down the nose. This area here. And we're going to just paint and kind of create some lines here. So same thing's going to happen. I'm going to increase my brush size, and I'm going to kind of go over those same areas again. And what it's going to do is it's just going to allow me to kind of create some depth. So I'm adding some highlights and some tonal qualities to the, um, some brightness to the highlights, and I'm darkening those shadows. So as you can kind of play with this, and add new, um, add some new effects. You can increase the flow if you want. If you want to go more dramatic, you can add some clarity in there. If you want to really start to enhance some of your shadows, just make sure you're being subtle. You can change the density of your brush, the flow of the brush, and some of those things. So where you can just add some, some depth to that. I'm going to do a new, make sure I'm doing a new brush. Now of course, I want to make sure I'm, I'm choosing the right spots, right? I'm hitting highlights, but I'm clicking on um, the shadows. So I want to make sure to move my settings back um, to kind of give us that option. just adds a little more depth in there. Now if I want to take that back a bit, I can. Um, well, it's not going to help if I'm on the shadows. So If I drop the shadows down, we can increase those, decrease those. You can go a little bigger with the brush. And those kind of things to increase some of that depth as well. And we can bring that brush back down. So all these kind of things that we can use with the dodging and burning to really start to kind of add a little more depth to our image. I mean, of course, it's something you want to spend some time on and finesse and find what your look and style is. There's a lot of tutorials out there to do it. Um, this is just showing you kind of real quick where to where to do that work. And you go from small brush, you know, something here to something there to something there in that same small to large brush. Adjustment, adding clarity and different things like that can certainly help. But now we're ready to move into 
um, and do some eye work um, and the lips and things like that as well. So let's jump into those details and make sure that we're enhancing um, things like the iris and the lips. Okay, so now we are ready to do some iris enhancement, work on the eyes, work on the lips, things like that, maybe sharpen underneath the nose, all those kind of final touches and basic beauty touch-up kind of work. So what we want to do is we're going to choose a new brush, and we want to make sure to choose the iris enhance effect. It's a good pre-built preset, right? So we want to change our brush size. Um, I changed the uh, feathering. To a little less feathering to where the edges are closer together and I change the size of it to match the size of a little bit smaller than the iris so I'm literally going to just click and drag around in the iris and I'm going to increase the size of my other one and I'm going to do the same so our difference between there and there you're seeing a lot of the skin move um, but something if we want to see if we really want to see that exposure Enhance, we can take the exposure all the way to the right, which is a little over the top. Now, something you're going to notice is we have the flow at 40, so that's going to be a pretty subtle adjustment for the eyes if you want to, of course, remove that and put the flow back to 100. When I paint here, it's going to change that effect. A lot more so that's something to keep in mind the flow when you have that at a lower adjustment that's going to allow for a much more subtle effect so I'm going to put it to 40 and I'm going to paint this back in just to show you Oh, let me see here. We might have to remove that altogether. Sometimes that helps to show the pins. So I'm going to make sure my flow, I'm going to put it back down to 30. And I am going to paint over the iris yet again. Both. And we're going to toggle that off so we can at least see the effect here. As we increase the exposure, it's a very subtle jump from what it's actually doing as we take that over to the right. So we definitely want to keep in mind, let's zoom into 100% and see what taking that all the way to the right looks like with the flow that we have. And see it's just subtle enough to where it can it'll increase that. Now we can start to add some clarity as well and increase our saturation if we want to enhance some of this we can drop the blacks down. If you want to add some warmth to those eyes you can all these things with subtlety very important here as we can see the difference between just the eyes from there to there becomes very very helpful for us so um, another adjustment that you want to do is maybe whiten the eyes you know whiten these areas just a bit so we'd create a new brush um, we want to take probably the saturation out negative 50, increase the exposure to there, maybe add some whites, maybe you can actually paint in some of that effect here to help with the eyes. It's a very popular technique to increase the eyes as well, just to give a little more brightness into those. Now if we want, if it's a little too much, of course, I think we got a little heavy. <laughs> we can take that exposure down and lower that where it's not so heavy. So very important with the eyes. Same thing with the lips, right? So we want to do another. Um, with the lips, we can paint and be a little more lazy with our technique here with the color range. Once we paint, we 
and choose just ellipse, hit our O key, and sh it'll show us where our mask is, right? It's going to turn green um, where that's working. So I'm going to do this with 100% flow so we can actually see the adjustment. So that's what happened to our lips. Range mask on for color. I'm going to choose the lips, and it's only going to now make the lips green. So pretty quick adjustment to do. Let's zoom in. Okay. All right. So now we want to go in and do a little work with the lips. I think the lips are kind of soft, right? So, um, I want to turn off these desaturated and adjustments. Obviously, we want to start over. Um, I want to increase increase clarity and sharpness. And you can kind of help these in a little bit of saturation. And let's take the tint to the pink side. Um, so those kind of things. Toggle that on and off. So I'll add just a little bit of depth in our lips. Let's add some whites as well. Not too much. And I think that gets us where we want to be with our eyes, lips. Of course, you can sharpen the underneath the. Come down a little bit on that clarity. Some sharpness. Again, we want to be subtle. With this, it helps when you're lower messing with that flow. That becomes a very important tool. So now that we're ready to move into the details panel, let's go over sharpening real quick, right? So we're gonna hit the K key to get out of this, and we're gonna start messing with the details of our image. So it's naturally at a 40 with sharpening. We can hold the Option key and click here, and that'll help you determine what's the right amount of sharpening since we've sharpened since we've softened the skin so much it's good to sharpen everything together so it has this kind of natural look to it um, but you can hold option on all of these all of these sliders in the details panel to figure out where your edges are to figure out your radius so when you can start to see all those details in the image same goes for detail slider we can increase this Remember, this becomes very important when you want to mask some things out, which is pretty cool. Um, you want to keep in mind, when you're doing these effects, you want to be zoomed in at 100% to where you can toggle this on and off. We take masking out. That kind of helps with some subtlety here. I think we're going a little too heavy on the sharpening, on the details. You wanna make sure it's clean. It's not too out of control here, um, but sharpening is gonna be helpful. You can also add some um, luminance to the noise reduction if you wanna bring back in some softening. Um, this kind of really only softens the noise so it's not really going to do a whole lot for our image here, um, but definitely something helpful for sharpening as we're looking the difference between here and here. Again, 100% is going to be a little more helpful. And again, if you lose your, your uh, zoom feature, which it seems like I have here, you can go back into the fit and then one to one. So you can toggle your Z key for one to one. That's kind of a trick there that becomes very helpful as you're wanting to make sure you're looking at your image. And as it, I'm still loading here, it's soft. still loading my 
there we go. <laughs> it took a second for it to catch up. Um, so you want to make sure you're working on um, one to one. The screen's adjusted itself for that sharpness. And that looks pretty good. So we zoom back out. And the last thing I like to do um, is the transform tool for some body shaping, right? So if you take the aspect slider to the right, it actually stretches um, her face out a little bit and just does a very subtle adjustment. From here to there. So you can do a little bit of face sculpting. It works real well with like headshots and things like this as well. Um, but that's something that can be very helpful. Definitely want to make sure to uh, you know let your bride know uh, that you're doing this. Most of the time, it's kind of up to their request, but it's something subtle that you can kind of give. A, you can enhance um, some of those more unflattering camera angles. This was shot up with a 100 millimeter lens, so you shouldn't have a whole lot of distortion with the face, but just can kind of help thin it out just a bit. Um, but there you have it. Um, overall, we're uh, we're done and ready to do our last steps in Lightroom, and uh, we'll move forward with the uh, results. So now that we're ready to show our image to our bride, we can look at the before and the after. So keep in mind a few things um, when it comes to retouching, uh, specifically for images for your bride. You definitely want to be using Photoshop. I mean, I typically use it. Um, I love Photoshop, but I like to push the limits of Lightroom. Um, Lightroom has always been about speed for me and now you can meet that speed with quality. Um, so end of day when you're looking for um, the right results, the right look for your image, you want to use the right tools but also understand those limitations of those tools, right? So there's a lot of limitations in Lightroom but there's a lot of things that um, you may have been using Lightroom but didn't know you could do like the spot removal and the different ways to, um, of course, to remove blemishes. That's kind of 101 stuff but to remove hot spots and use the opacity slider and things like that become very important, as well as the adjustment brush for some of that depth layering with some dodging and burning, some really cool kind of more commercial lighting uh, to help with the, um, you know, some of the depth of the face of our subject. So um, definitely uh, urge you to try using Lightrooms, trying using your own techniques and things like that. Um, you want to know the brush settings and the hotkeys that becomes so important to the efficiency part of Lightroom but also being able to be a little more flexible with your editing right because results matter and you still want to be efficient um, while still bringing accuracy to your editing so I definitely urge you to try some of these tips um, and tricks for the um, you know beautifying your bride and reach out if you guys have any questions or different techniques that you use I'd definitely be um, interested to hear about them